Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be sharing 10 mistakes that I made when I first started rebuilding my wardrobe. I think it's totally normal to make mistakes when you're just starting out because everything's really new and you're not exactly sure what you like yet, but my hope is that after watching today's video, you can avoid some of the things that I did and learn from my mistakes and have a much smoother journey to finding your style. If you're new here, my name is Val and here on my channel I talk about personal style, how to build a lasting wardrobe, and how to find contentment in having a less. So if those topics interest you, I'd love for you to check out my channel and join my community here on YouTube. So the first mistake I made was thinking that I had my style figured out right away. When I first started working on my personal style, I was really excited about the clarity that I was starting to see. I was writing down a lot of things that I was discovering and making all these notes and I really thought that I was done, that I had it all figured out already. So I went on and made a shopping list of all the things that I wanted to add, but a lot of those items ended up being not right for me at all because they weren't really practical for my lifestyle or maybe they weren't a color that I liked after all. And that whole process left me feeling really discouraged and disappointed because I couldn't figure out why all these new clothes that I was buying were not really right for me. I wish that I had seen this process as a journey that you go on slowly and things really become more and more clear the further along you go. So my tip here to you guys is just to slow down and be more relaxed about this whole process and don't think that you're going to have it all figured out right away and to be okay with the mistakes that you're going to make because you will, you will make mistakes. It's really all part of the process and about learning about your style. That brings me right into my second mistake, which is that I was buying way too much, way too fast. I thought I finally knew what I liked, so I wanted to buy everything right away just so I could be done with it. And of course that led to a lot of regret purchases. I actually have a notebook where I track everything that I buy, and I started this in 2016 actually. And in it I write things like what the item cost, and also how long it lasted in my wardrobe, and why I ended up decluttering it. It's really fascinating for me to keep track of things like this, but it's also a really painful reminder to slow down and buy things with a lot more thought and intention. Because the majority of the things that I ended up buying that first year ended up not lasting me at all. So my advice here is just to slow down your shopping if you're just starting out. You know, just buy a few things a season and really wait to see if they really are your style and how you feel about them. If you try to buy everything at once, there will definitely be some regret purchases. So in my very early days of building my wardrobe, I would shop at places like H&M and Target because there I could buy a lot of things for a little bit of money. But a lot of those items of course ended up shrinking or pilling or twisting in the wash and they didn't really last me a long time. So I had to learn the lesson that if I wanted to have good quality clothes that would last, I had to be willing to spend a little bit more money on them. We didn't have a lot of money growing up so I was used to shopping at places like Forever 21 and H&M and I had the mentality that clothes needed to be really cheap and when I started investing in my wardrobe a little bit more it was a really shock to me how much clothes cost so I had to get used to the idea that you know a good pair of shoes are a hundred dollars and that's okay <laughs> that's how much they're worth but since being frugal with my money was also really important to me I started shopping a lot second hand because there I could find like a really good quality shoe for a lot lower than what it would be sold originally and so I could still save money but still be buying good quality clothes. So if you have the mentality that you need to buy as much as possible for as little as possible, I would gently encourage you to rethink that and to try to shop more intentionally and buy quality over quantity. When I stopped shopping at places like Target and H&M, my next mistake was assuming that higher quality stores like Nordstrom or J. Crew would carry clothes that are all made from natural fibers. So I would find a nice looking sweater that I wanted to buy, but when I went to look at the tag, I would be really surprised that the majority of clothes were still made with a lot of polyester. So if natural fibers are important to you, my tip here is to always check the tag to make sure you know what you're getting, especially for online listings and especially when you're buying second hand. I always usually ask the seller to take a picture of the tag just so that I know exactly what I'm buying and I'm never surprised or disappointed. Mistake number five was buying what I thought I was supposed to have. So this mistake is one that I think a lot of us make when we first start working on our personal style. 
is we find a lot of inspiration from you know different blogs or people on Instagram and they look really beautiful in all the clothes that they're wearing so we think that maybe we like those clothes too and so we start wanting to buy the same clothes as other people and in the process kind of we get a little bit confused about what we actually like to wear. I think it's really great to get inspiration from other people but just not to forget that other people don't have the same lives that we do or the same lifestyles so the things we need are usually going to be really different. So take inspiration from other people but don't try to copy their style and be very wary of people saying that this is an essential that you have to have in your closet. It does take a lot longer to pay attention to what you actually like instead of what other people suggest but I think it's so worth it when you have a style that's really personal and really unique to you. My next mistake was thinking that I had to only buy from sustainable brands to be sustainable. As I went along my personal style journey, I was learning a lot about slow fashion and how to be a more conscious and sustainable consumer. So I started looking into buying from all the different sustainable brands that my favorite fashion bloggers were recommending. But the prices for a lot of these brands were pretty high and out of my budget. It felt really discouraging to want to shop better and not only buy from fast fashion, but not be able to afford it. So I finally figured out a shopping strategy that was practical for me and for my lifestyle. I would try to look for more higher quality pieces at places like J.Crew or Nordstrom because those felt like a step up from places like H&M and Forever 21 where I used to shop. I started shopping for a lot of the ethical brands on the secondhand market and I was able to find a lot of pieces secondhand that I was able to add to my wardrobe. And I also just started shopping a lot less so that if I wanted to buy something new, I could afford to save up and spend a little bit more than normal. So if you've been feeling discouraged about not being able to afford sustainable fashion, maybe a new slow fashion shopping strategy is right for you. Another mistake that I stumbled into was buying a lot of clothes for my fantasy life and not my practical life. When I first started working on my style, I would pin a lot of images where the woman looked really classic and beautiful and a lot of these like timeless elegant pieces and they looked a lot more put together than how I felt normally at home. So I figured, okay, if I want to look more put together, that's how I should look. So I started to buy more dressy things like you know, blouses and high heels, but I ended up having a lot more dressier clothes for going out and not enough clothes at all for staying at home and being more casual, which is actually what my life really is like. I have finally fixed that mistake in the last few years as I have focused more on adding good quality casual clothes that I can wear at home, but still wear for like running out the door or going out for a quick errand. They're not super dressy, but I've realized that my style is actually really relaxed and casual and that's what I feel really comfortable in right now. So the lesson here is that it's okay to have a handful of clothes that are more suited for the lifestyle you wish you had, but the majority of your clothes should still be tailored to your daily life so that you're really satisfied with the clothes that you're wearing on a daily basis. The next mistake that I made was not understanding my body type and how I wanted clothes to fit. I remember really loving the look of high-rise jeans and I would pin a lot of these images on Pinterest where girls were wearing you know, their t-shirts tucked into their jeans and it created a really beautiful silhouette. So I thought, okay, I love that style, that's what I want. So I went and I bought myself a pair of high-rise jeans and I put them on and the effect that it created was not the same at all. I have a more rectangular body type so you know, the jeans were not cinching me in at the waist. The style just didn't look right at all. And I remember feeling so disappointed and I felt like something was wrong with my body because I didn't have that hourglass shape and I couldn't create that same silhouette that I love so much. And I really didn't understand my body type and how I could create the proportions that I wanted. I later came to learn that if I wanted to accentuate my waist, I needed high-rise jeans that came up a little bit higher so that they could set at my natural smallest point of my waist and now I'm able to create that silhouette because I kind of know my body more and I know how to work the proportions of it. And I finally just came to love and accept my body in the way that it is. You know, I'm never gonna have an hourglass shape and I'm okay with that now. I've learned how to balance out my proportions in a way that I like and how to wear clothes that flatter my body in the way that I like and in the way that makes me feel good. If you don't know your body type and you're really frustrated in the way that clothes fit you, I'd really encourage you to research that more and just learn about your body and how to 
wear clothes in the way that make you feel good. You know, clothes are supposed to fit us. We don't need to squeeze our bodies into different clothes that don't make us feel good. And I think when we learn our body and accept it, we can find clothes that fit us in the way that we love and that makes us feel really great. I will link some different body type videos down below that were really helpful to me. My favorite body typing method is the yin yang method, which kind of talks about us being on a spectrum of really soft curvy to really sharp and angular and dramatic and that we all kind of have a combination of all of that in us. So growing up I really hated that I have like a straight waist without much definition and that I have a sharp nose and a sharp chin but I've really come to embrace those features and I love that I have some sharp and angular features and some more curvy and soft features and I'm just learning to love the way that I am and just know that I'm unique and nobody else looks like me. Another mistake that I made was not making very specific wish lists. When I first started planning my wardrobe, I would just write down a lot of things that I wish that I had and that I wanted to add to my wardrobe and it would become a really, really long list and my list never felt complete and I was always on the hunt for more and more and more because I was never really satisfied. So now I organize my shopping list by priority. So I try to buy a few things each season that are basics that are missing from my wardrobe, maybe like a pair of jeans or a coat. And then I also try to buy a few things that are more statement pieces that really reflect my personal style that I really want. And that way my closet feels very cohesive and everything goes together. And if there's something on my list that I really wanna buy, but I know that maybe I don't need it right away, I'll put it on for the next year. That way I know that I will get around to buying it eventually, but it's not really a priority for me right now. So my tip here is to organize your list by priority so that whatever you add always makes the biggest impact on your wardrobe. But also be okay with not buying everything right away. Your dream wardrobe is gonna take a little bit of time to create and that's okay. And my last mistake here is not taking enough shopping breaks. When I first started shopping secondhand, I would always be on the hunt for the next thing on my wish list. So even though it would be winter, if I wanted to buy like a specific pair of shoes for the summer, I would always be looking for those items because I never knew when they would show up on the secondhand market. It was really exhausting mentally to always be thinking about clothes, but I just never wanted to miss a new listing. In hindsight, I would definitely recommend trying to take breaks every season just to give yourself a break mentally from thinking about clothes. Again, your dream wardrobe is going to take time to create and back then I remember I really just wanted to finish it right away so it was just like, okay, if I find something I can buy it right away and then I'll be done. But of course that was never the case because I would always go on to the next item on my shopping list and it was just really, really exhausting. So now I really just try to shop for the season that I'm in and then when I feel like that's enough items, I just stop shopping and I stop looking for a while. And the reason why I like things like capsule wardrobes is that you kind of just have your items for the season and then you're done. You can just take a break and you can just enjoy what you already have. It's just a really nice way to slow down your shopping and just learn to sit and be content with what you have at the moment. If this was helpful to you at all, please hit that like button and I'll see you guys in my next video.